Greetings, and welcome to episode 77. In today's episode, I'll be discussing violence, and how being non-violent doesn't necessarily make you a more spiritual person. And before you get upset, hear me out. I will explain. So, if we're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, violence versus nonviolence as it concerns being a spiritual person. I'm not sure where, if at all, it is written that to be a spiritual person, you have to be nonviolent. And if it is written, there that to be a more spiritual person you have to be nonviolent doesn't necessarily mean that I agree and mind you I am not a Christian so if your main argument comes from the Bible you're gonna have to do better than that because I'm not a Christian and <clears throat> of all the holy books I lean heavily on, that is not the book. <laughs> it is not, absolutely, is not the book I lean the most heavily on when it comes to spiritual guidance. That is not to say there, I, I, I found nothing of importance in that book. That's just to say I do not get any spiritual guidance from that book. Having said that, this notion of being peaceful, that's a notion that's only been pushed for the last four or five hundred years. Now mind you, these same people that are pushing the notion of peace and I'm not talking about Buddhist monks. I'm talking about Christianity as it is the dominant religion in the world today. I can't even say the dominant religion in the world today. But at the time, in this country, it was the dominant religion. And is still to this day, I could, is arguably the dominant religion because. There are quite a few Muslims in this country, and I don't mean immigrants, I mean Muslims that were born and raised right here in America. Anyway, if you're looking for where the, the, the push for peace started, it started here at gunpoint. <laughs> Which in itself is laughable. Gun in one hand and the Bible in the other hand. Uh, peace, peace, let's be nonviolent. But they never gave up their guns or their ability to acquire certain services so that they didn't have to get their hands dirty. And this is all throughout history. Peace, 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 but send an army. <laughs> So that's a contradictory message, message at best. At the very worst, it's bullshit. <laughs> now, when I say violence or being violent, I'm not referring to walking down the street and hitting anybody you please, whenever you please, or purchasing a firearm and going around randomly shooting people whenever you please. When I say violence versus nonviolence, I'm speaking of the term. In, I'm speaking in terms of if I am attacked, do I fight back? I'm speaking in terms of if I see someone being attacked, do I go and help this person, or do I stand by my convictions and? 
plead for this man to stop beating this man. Which ultimately does this man no service. And it could be argued, well, you stepping in and fighting the man for him does him no service. It stops him from getting beaten. And <clears throat> it's clever for you to say that. Well, why should you step in? It's just, you know, an eye for an eye makes the world go blind. Okay, I'll give you that. Eye for an eye makes the world go blind. But an eye for an eye is speaking in terms of vengeance. I'm not talking about vengeance. I'm talking about you get attacked or you witness someone else being attacked. That's not eye for an eye. That is you stepping in, physically protecting someone from getting beaten up. And before you denounce that, you would also, I, I, I would imagine you'd be the first one to call the authorities. Do you know what the authorities are going to do when they get there? They're going to tackle the guy to the ground, forcibly handcuff him, and throw him in the back of a car. Are you saying it's okay for them to do it? Does that make them less spiritual because they chose to be police officers and guard people's lives for a living? Does that make me less spiritual because I've taken it upon myself to to stand up for this individual who's being accosted at the moment. And what about you? What if it was you? If some man, it's, it's easy to talk. Talk is cheap. Man jumps out of the shadows at you and I just happen to be there and I stop him. Whether I beat him up or not, I stop him. I think you're going to thank me. I don't think you're going to say, well, violence never solved anything. Well, it solved the problem of you getting your ass whooped. <laughs> talk is cheap we can all sit in a room where it's all nice and safe and we can all talk all the crap we want but when you get down the street a little ways and something happens what are you going to do you going to conviction him to death are you going to stand by my convictions uh. And when you come to, <laughs> you can tell me what it was like. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we should hunt them down. Anyone that would do anyone wrong, we should hunt them down. No. But I am saying you should defend yourself. And I'm not even saying, go out and buy a gun. I'm saying, if all life is precious, which is what I assume is the basis of your convictions, all life is precious. If all life is precious, then so is yours. People like me, we take it upon ourselves to defend others. I would be more likely to defend, uh, excuse me, I would be more likely to defend someone else before I defend myself. That's not to say that I wouldn't defend myself. Because I most assuredly would defend myself. That's to say, <clears throat> I place value on your life. But not just your life. I place value on your well-being. That means if someone is coming to uh, affect your well-being negatively, then I'm going to intervene. Now this is going to cause one of two things to happen. Either I'm going to cause a negative effect to this other person's well-being, who is trying to affect yours, or they're going to affect my well-being. But I would still consider it a job done, mission accomplished, if instead of beating you up, they beat me up. And that's less being violent than it is redirecting someone else's violence. Because I don't presume for a moment that I can go out and just whoop everybody's ass, but on the same token, I don't presume that I'm going to get my ass whooped by everybody that confronts me. Some people would just, hands down, that makes you less spiritual. Would you say that to a Shaolin monk? Would you dispute the thousands of years of philosophy that goes into the training of a Shaolin monk?
spirituality is the basis of their fighting style and how they have such control over their body would you denounce that would you go to them and say you're wrong and on what grounds would you have this argument would, would what grounds would you base this argument I can say with honesty, something went horribly wrong if a situation devolves into violence. But not all situations devolve into violence. Some situations begin with violence, i.e., a man jumping out of the shadows, and grabbing you, threatening your life, give me your, give me your money. Well, I'll just give him my money. Yes, but you've seen his face. Odds are he's going to do something to you just to leave you intimidated. If he leaves you alive, he needs to leave you intimidated enough to not turn him in. There is a quote, and I can't even tell you who, whose quote it is. But I heard this quote, and it struck me. And perhaps I'm just a bad person, or think of me what you will, but this is the quote. It says, Any man who appeals to the law against his fellow man is either a fool or a coward. Any man who cannot live without that law is both. For the wounded man shall say to his assailant, If I die, you are forgiven. But if I live, I will kill you. This is the rule of honor. End quote. That struck me. There's such beauty in that. In other words, what that says is, if you do something to me and I die, well, there's no one should come after you for that. You were forgiven. But if you do something to me and I live, you should expect it to come. You should expect it. It's no different than karma. And, I mean, let's face it. Karma, it has its place and it does its job. And we all learn and we do lifetime after lifetime. But it struck me. I have children. I have four children. And the one thing that struck me about my children is when they did something wrong and it came time to punish them. When they were younger, they didn't really understand what was going on. They understood they did something they shouldn't have. But they didn't understand why you were upset. They didn't understand what you were saying sometimes. I mean, even if they were old enough to talk, doesn't mean, I mean, as adults, sometimes we can use big words. And even my teenage girls. Any punishment, I don't care if it's an ass whooping, being grounded, losing privileges, karma. None of these things work if you have forgotten what it was you're being punished for in the first place. Or if you don't know what it is you're being punished for. At that point, it's just hardship and you learn nothing. Nothing. Eye for an eye makes the world go blind. There is truth to that. And don't think I don't see that. But there is no such thing as an unsolvable paradox. If someone kills my son, I'm not going to chase him down and kill him. I'm not going to chase his son down and kill him. Although in the Bible it says that is what is appropriate. It's funny that the same people that say an eye for an eye makes the world go blind, most of those people preach from a book that says, if you kill my son, it's okay for me to go kill your son. <laughs> also says, if my brother dies, I get his wife. But 
that's a weird book and we're not going to go there. <laughs> anyway, like I said, there are things in that book. There's a, a lot of things in that book that I have a lot of respect for. It's just not the spiritual aspects or some of the more, or should I say, some of the less esoteric wisdoms <laughs> that can be found therein. Anyway. <clears throat> An eye for an eye makes the world go blind. Granted. But that, that to me, says, okay, let's say that there was no system of laws. It was just every man for himself. And people just gener generally got along with that unspoken, don't mess with me, I won't mess with you, don't start, and then won't be the man. But then someone comes to town, and he's from a different place where the rules are slightly different. And he comes, and he beats you up, and he takes your your things. What would you do about it? You just lament your bad luck? Would you go try to get your things back? Because if you go to try to get your things back, you've now just reached your hand out for his eye. And that is, it doesn't matter if it's even if that is the right thing to do. If you go grab your buddies, you know, I don't want any violence, but I want my things back. You're still reaching for that eye. You wouldn't need the backup if you didn't think things were going to go down when you got there. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd just go yourself. Hey, can I get those things back that you stole from me? Or you could go there with the mindset that I'm getting my stuff. Well, what if he kills me this time? Rule of honor dictates, if you kill me, you are forgiven. So if you go to get your things back and you end up dead, now you don't need those things anymore. <laughs> I kid, I kid. But if he ends up killing you, that plays into it. Because you're trying to be nonviolent. I can respect that. This other gentleman obviously doesn't respect that or he wouldn't have taken your things. You go to try to get them back, he kills you. Now he's taken your things and he's taken your life. And now your argument would be, you know, if I had just let those things go because they're just material possessions. Okay, just material possessions. I get that. But it's the principle of the thing. You have now let this man go unpunished. Well, I told some people, well, telling some people is just, they're going to give him snide looks, waggle their finger, not much of a deterrent. Violence, what does it say? Violence solves nothing. If you were to get a bunch of your buddies and go down, and don't try to get your stuff back, but get a bunch of your buddies and go down and whoop his ass, because let's face it, everything costs something. And maybe the price for him, his karma at that moment, is to suffer A beatdown. Because what happens if, and I, I don't, it's funny, I don't spank my children, but what happens if you don't discipline them at all? If you don't let them know it was the wrong thing to do? They develop a mindset that it's okay to do this. So this man that comes to town and he takes your belongings and you do nothing. You've now told him that if no one else in the city will give me anything, I can come and get it from you. Whether or not you let me, I can take it and you'll do nothing. At this point, violence is starting to look like a deterrent. And then you could say, well, that's why we have police and laws. But you're still... Not you're missing the point. All you're saying at that point is, well, I can call this service and keep my hands clean, and they'll come and they'll punish him, and they'll get their hands dirty. As soon as you make that phone call, whatever happens when those police arrive, you bear the responsibility of that because those police wouldn't be there if you hadn't called. So your hands are not clean. 
if they rough him up, if they kill him on accident, that's your fault. You called them. If you call no one, he goes unpunished and believes he can just get away with doing this. I can think of quite a few instances in my life where violence would have saved the day. And some stories I've heard from friends where violence would have saved the day. Because violence was being perpetrated against them. And had they not been so afraid, they probably would have fought back. And things would have been different. Like I said, it's easy to sit in the safety and comfort of your home and talk about nonviolence. It's another thing entirely to go out and live it. And I'm not saying that there's no man that's ever lived it. What I'm saying is it's one thing to talk. It's another thing to walk. But allow me to play devil's advocate to my own conversation. Or to my own, uh, what would you call this? Rambling? <laughs> Ramblings of a madman? Anyway. I see the necessity for nonviolence. And in a perfect world, I wouldn't have a problem at all living a completely, from start to finish, nonviolent life. But as long as there's someone out there willing to hurt or kill to get what they want, then people should be prepared to defend themselves to the same extent. Because you capture this person that's done you wrong. So you and your buddies get together and decide we're going to nonviolently capture this guy. Because remember, the scenario is there's no laws, there's no law enforcement. It's just your community and how they deal with things. If they're, if how they deal with things is to stick their head in the sand, that community isn't going to last very long. But if let's say, for instance, nonviolent approach, they apprehend the person in question. Now, feeding and housing this person is now the burden of the people that have captured him. So now, you bear that burden. Sure, he's being punished. Yeah, he sees what for. But I'm... Uh, take you and a couple of buddies, go, go beat him up. Now he's beaten up. Don't even try to get the stuff back, but let him know that that doesn't play here. You know, we don't go for that here. If you want something in this community, ask. We don't have a problem sharing, but that was uncalled for. He'll either figure out that this isn't the place for him and move on, or He'll start to acclimatize himself or acclimate to the, to the situation that he's in. Oh, I didn't know that all I had to do was ask. But if nothing is done at all, he will never ask and he'll never learn that he's done something wrong. He'll just see this easy mark. Well, I can just go get it from him. Nobody's going to stop me. Just for the record, I have never been a bully. When I was growing up, when I was in school, I was the guy that would protect people from the bully. And I, I can say, in all honesty, I wasn't a bully. And from where I was sitting, we were all picking on each other. It wasn't me just picking on other people. People were picking on me too. We all picked on each other. So, in that regard, yes, I got in on the festivities of nitpicking, or not nitpicking, but picking, picking fun at everybody. 
and everybody picked fun at me and it was all in fun but when somebody actually threatened somebody I knew somebody younger somebody smaller I stepped in I intervened I used to beat up bullies and then they stopped being bullies and see all this uh, spare the rod or it's child abuse nowadays and nobody's disciplining their children and now you have schools and the internet full of bullies and now you have to have campaigns to say stop the bullies when back in the day if someone got sick of the bully they just beat his ass and that put an end to it well it's never solved anything it did when I was a kid and it has since I've become an adult when you've seen firsthand results <laughs> it's hard to look a man in the eye and say violence never solves anything large-scale violence war and the and the like I can say that in certain circumstances that even has its place because it's not war if one country is invading another it's not war until we step in to defend that helpless country then it's war and in that case violence still solves something and I can't say that nonviolence has never solved anything because it has Gandhi you had the, uh, the the monks that set themselves on fire to protest the Korean War or was that the Vietnam War I think it was the Vietnam War my bad I hate being wrong with a reference anyway the point I'm trying to make is I see where nonviolence has worked but you cannot look at me you cannot I mean post in the video I want you to post I want to see what you have to say but if you tell me that violence has never solved anything I'm going to tell you you're wrong the sad fact and yes I do believe and I do agree that it is sad the sad fact is that violence does solve things like I said karma is worthless if the person doesn't understand or remember what they've done wrong to deserve whatever hardship is given to them because it just I don't, how many I don't, how many times have I sat there and thought you know my life is going really bad right now and I have to think back on every crappy thing that I've ever done not that's ever happened to me but that I've ever done and think have I ever treated anyone this badly have I ever made someone go through what I'm going through now and if the answer is no all I can sit and think is I hope I've never done anything this crappy to anyone to actually deserve what's going on in my life I really hope it's just happening but say, let's say I remembered two, three lifetimes ago when I uh, made some family homeless or made it so they couldn't pay their bills and just caused them X amount of stress. Oh, I remember that. I remember. I deserve that. I have that coming. Makes sense. Now, I'm not by any means saying we should all go out and beat people up. No, 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 no. But if it's in you to defend others, like it's in me to defend others, don't think for a moment that it makes you less spiritual because you feel it in your heart that you were put here to help and defend others. Don't, make you, don't let that make you feel like you're less spiritual. You're not leaning on violence as a staple for life. Like, I gotta beat someone up or I just don't feel right. <laughs> no. What you're saying is <clears throat> if a situation arises, I will defend myself. Likewise, I will defend someone else. Because I will defend those that have the argument that violence never solved anything. And those that have the argument that nonviolence is the way. I will stand up and defend those people. Because I know that they are either unwilling or unable to. And I understand the unwilling part. I know what it's like to have a conviction or a, a, such a strongly held belief that you just can't do it. But I can't sit idly by and watch them suffer 
at the hands of another if I can do something about it. Even if they ask me not to, I would rather take the beating for them than watch them suffer. And granted, this could be their karma, but why can't it be that me stepping in isn't doesn't represent the evolution of that person's karma. Well, time sure do fly, don't it? <laughs> anyway, we're getting on to the 30 minute mark. Wow, I haven't made a video in a long time and I like hit it right at the spot. Anyway, I really like this video. I've been wanting to make this video for a while, but I couldn't, couldn't, uh, get motivated I guess after I moved into this new place the motivation just isn't there like it was at the other place anyway but I'm getting back into it and hopefully I'll be making a video if not every day then at least Monday Wednesday and Thursday no Monday Wednesday and Friday starting of course this Friday anyway if you've enjoyed this video please click the like button you can favorite it if you like if you want to that's weird. Click the like button. You can favorite it if you like. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> if you'd like to keep getting this information and you like what you hear, then by all means, click the subscribe button. But uh, until next time, you hang in there.